George the Tech. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech for another GTT module. This one we're going to be talking about recording and editing techniques to get you started. So you've decided what software to use, what equipment to use, what mic you're going to use. You've got some basic studio space to work in and record. Now what? If you've never recorded yourself before, there's a few basic things that I want you to, to learn today to get you started to help you feel a little more comfortable with the process. And for the software I'm going to use today, we're going to use Twisted Wave. Now, I know a lot of you might be using something else, but Twisted Wave is very straightforward. So I love to start with this one because it works the same on Mac and Windows, and it's very uncluttered. And we want to use software that is as uncluttered as possible, very simple, straightforward, and easy to use. Well, the first thing to do is anytime you launch your recording software, some of the geeks might call it your DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, is you have to make sure that your audio interface that you're choosing to record with is actually the input in the software. In Twisted Wave, there's two different places to do that. There's in the Twisted Wave Preferences area, under Devices, And there's also the audio area under the audio menu where you'll see input device at your recording source or microphone setting. And in my case, I know there's a lot going on, but I'm going to choose to record with the input called Pro 2 Chat. And then my output is when I hit play on my software, where do I want the audio to be heard when playing back? And in my system, it's the Pro 2 Multitrack channel. But on yours, it might be the Scarlett 2i2 or something like that. Always check this setting. Your software is designed to remember that setting, but you would not believe how often people mistakenly record from the right input because they use laptops that they carry around, they plug in, they unplug, and then they, for <laughs> and then they forget to set the recording input the next time. Or... The next time they launch their software, they don't have their audio interface plugged in, so it defaults to the wrong input. So that's very important, step one. Step two is set your gain or microphone recording levels. So every product is gonna do this a little bit differently, okay? But the most simple audio interfaces out there are going to have a basic, simple microphone gain knob just like this. On this product, we have, this happens to be a mixer face, probably a little more sophisticated than many of you will choose to use, but the concepts are the same. On the top row, there's some knobs that are labeled gain. They might be labeled mic or something else, but here it's gain. And this is where we're gonna choose to set our recording levels. But how much gain do we need to use? That's frustrating, right? Well, you have to start with reading something and not just reading it, performing it. Performing it the way that you're intending to perform the actual script. Whether it's a whispery ASMR read or just a narration spoken in your full voice or a crazy character voice, you have to at least get some audio coming in at the levels that you intend to be performing. So how do we start? The best thing to do is always just start by hitting record. Now we can verify we're getting a recording signal in our program. And we can also verify that we're recording from the correct source. What's the easiest way to do that? Just scratch on the microphone you happen to be recording with. It'll be very clear to you when you look at the signal on your software, which channel you're actually recording. Do not go by what you hear in your headphones if you are wearing headphones. You can still hear the microphone in your headphones while recording a different channel. So you have to look at the VU meter, that thing bouncing up and down on the right-hand side, or in Adobe Audition at the bottom, or in Twisted Wave at, or on Audacity at the top or wherever you happen to put it. So when I do this, if you tap, do it gently, you should see a dramatic jump in signal. If you don't, 
you definitely know you're not recording the right signal. Okay, that out of the way. I'm going to undo, and I'm going to hit record again. And now we'll work on setting levels. So for some stimulating and exciting copy, why well, let's read from the voiceover resource guide, which just happens to be on my desk. And I've opened it to the ad for skills hub right in here. So let's give this a listen. Now you'll notice I'm using an underslung microphone because I'm working on camera right now. And I find that more comfortable for you. You'll probably want to have your microphone suspended and upside down because it gets a little bit more of a natural sound. In fact, let's see if that microphone is working. It is. All right, let's use this one. The beauty of this kind of a mic placement is I'm on a sweet spot in front of the microphone, about a fist thumb away. The mic is just to the side of my mouth and my script can be right in front. And this is important. The script has to be right at eye level so you can get consistent recording results and a good clean voice. Okay, let's give it a shot. Now, if you like to hit the marker key on your software to mark where the beginning of a script is, you can. A lot of you may not have their, your keyboard in front of you in your recording space. So, But if you happen to, in my software on Twisted Wave, it's the letter M, and it's going to make a marker marking my first take. The Skills Hub Edge. Direct one-to-one -one access to casting directors, voice directors, and top working actors. Coaching blocks as short as 10 minutes, available at any time. Live classes taught by working pros for as little as $50. Step-by-step -step plans to build a career at your own pace. So I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to assume, in your case, that you may not be able to see your recording levels while recording. For many of you, having your laptop close to or a computer screen close to your microphone may not be feasible. And it's also very difficult to actually read your script and actually focus on performing your script and watch your levels at the same time. So for that reason, I recommend recording a take, stopping, and then taking a look at your levels. So what do we see here? The levels look good on screen by meaning they're not overly minimal. So if I was to turn the levels down, and have too low of a level, they might look like something like this. This is not ideal. In this recording, if I hit playback, let's watch the meters on the right to see what kind of levels we have. The Skills Hub Edge. Direct one-to-one -one access to casting directors, voice directors, and top working actors. In this case, look, I'm getting levels that are falling below minus 20 dB. Not ideal. Going back to the levels that I recorded, take a look at where my levels fall when I hit play. The Skills Hub Edge. Direct one-to-one -one access to casting directors, voice directors, and top working actors. They're landing in the yellow zone. What's the yellow zone? Well, that's between minus 12 dB and minus 6 dB. So that's a very good level to set as a, as a reference point for setting your gain. So if your levels are coming in much higher than this or much lower than this, stop, make an adjustment on your gain. If you're recording too low, go to your preamp gain. On this one, it's channel one gain and increase it a little bit, okay? Turning it to the right, this direction clockwise will increase the gain, giving the microphone more sensitivity. Then do another record and take and check your levels again. Now, if you're doing character work, this can be a little bit more challenging because you don't know for sure how much energy or volume you might be performing that character if you haven't read the script yet. So you may need to read through the script and get a sense of what the character is going to be doing, how you're going to perform it, the energy level you're going to give to the signal, etc. Once you kind of figure that out, then you can do this recording test. And in many cases, when you're doing character stuff, you may have an average level that's actually a lot lower than what you see here. Why? Because you may have an occasional spot here and there where your levels are much louder because you say a certain...